Thank you. My name is Salih Marangos. I, my talk will be about tension band plating or plate epiphysiodesis. Tension band plating was first described by Stevens in 2007. Prior to that, lance tables have been the mainstay treatment for such a purpose. But the problem of the blunt staples mainly were about implant failures, including loosening and migration of the implant. The theory behind guided growth lies on the fulcrum that is theoretically at the uh, physis implant interface in staples, whereas in plate epiphysiodesis it's moved further away from the physis, which theoretically creates a biomechanical advantage. So tension band plating uh, requires lesser surgical time and it's faster in implantation and removal, uh, less problems, create better purchase, more reliable. Uh, it's argued to be having relatively slower correction rate, although the initial inventor uh, rec uh, suggested that it has a faster correction rate, about 30%. It is also considered to be more suitable in children younger than eight years of age with partially unossified Physis. The biomechanical principle behind is a fixed bridging of the periphery of the physis exteroperiosteally by a plate and two screws. It's called tension bend principle. But this was also questioned by an experimental study by Ignacio Sampera and his group uh, saying that this also creates compression but in a gradual manner. So tension bend plating was initially described for correction of coronal deformities but also they are effective in sagittal deformities, rotational deformities, and limb length discrepancies. Having said that, some innovative treatments have been proposed, one of which is from Ignacio Samperas group in uh, cave of various foot uh, uh, by using growth modulation and plate epiphysitis in the foot. So let's uh, look at the uh, surgical techniques, pearls. It has to be meticulous, tourniquet should be used, periosteal vessels should be avoided, uh, no cautery if possible, and fluoroscopy check should be made. Here's a glimpse of the surgical field. Uh, some needles or smooth wires can be used to place the plate over the physis, and then in a guided fashion, uh, the screws have been uh, inserted through uh, and the plate is fixed inside the one might want to check the sagittal plane to make sure it's all looking good on the sagittal plane as well. How do we put the screws? Do we put them parallel or divergent? This was a question a long time, and uh, there's an argument between, uh, first it was thought to be that there's a slack and uh, between the plate and the screw that the screws has to have to be toggling in order to start uh, functioning, but this is now being disputed by recent literature, uh, creating the fact that uh, inserting parallel screws uh, all at its anatomical best fit to around the physis uh, are, are good enough and uh, to create a functioning uh, screw plate configuration. So we are not uh, looking for inserting divergent screws anymore in angular deformity correction in tension band plating. Uh, it has been shown that there's no difference at zero to 30 degrees and instead of risking uh, of a possible physical arrest or any other problems, it is recommended to insert the screws at the anatomical best fit. And it was shown that increased correction rate were seen in non-divergent screws. Parallel screws have greater capacity to toggle with growth at the plate screw interface and this effectively shifts the center of rotation to a truly extra physical position, thereby increasing the biomechanical advantage and creating an efficiency into the system. This was also uh, studied in terms of the screw size. The screw lengths do not make any significant difference, although uh, the shorter screws in this uh, experimental study created better correction rates, 
that were statistically non-significant. So let's look at this uh, tension band plating in, in some categorical ways, uh, one of which is timing of growth modulation. Future Volkman law lies uh, in the principle is explaining that the, the more severe the deformity is, the greater the force generated R so that the greater compression will occur on the concave side of the deformity causing even more deformity by further decelerating the growth even further. And um, we also know that we have an unpredictable response rate of the growth plate after tension bent plating uh, removals. So this also generates another question uh, of uncertainty in the timing of growth modulation insertion and explantation. We don't much see premature physical closure after tension bent uh, plating. Uh, it's extremely rare unless the plates are removed within uh, two to three years of insertion. Bowen has created a formula for permanent epiphysiodesis. Multiplier method also has some formulas in itself uh, for growth modulation, but these were not validated in clinical trials in terms of the angular deformity correction uh, techniques. Multiplier method has a tendency to underpredict. This means that if you're using multiplier method, especially uh, in children close to skeletal maturity, the tension band plating should be started a little prior to what you measure on the uh, formulas or the apps around two to four months earlier and uh, the findings should be taken with a grain of salt. Frontal plane deformity is around the knee. Uh, if you look at the, the correction is faster in less than 10 years old compared to greater than 10 years of age. Multi correction is around 0.7 degrees in femur and 0.5 in tibia. The most predictable results we get in idiopathic cases, and if you talk about the implant failures, uh, adolescent blast disease uh, is the one that has the highest incidence of screw breakage rates. In infantile blast disease, we started using tension band plating earlier, around uh, 2.5 to 3 years of age, uh, so that the correction can be achieved by age 4 in order to uh, uh, in order to avoid a decompensation period afterwards. <clears throat> Here's an example of infantile blast disease, and I just want to remind that our pro art program is an important. Uh, tool in such patients to see, to better delineate the joint lines and measure the angles. So in infantile blunts disease and also adolescent blunts disease, this article uh, explains that tension band plating should be accepted as an initial strategy. Although the correction in infantile blunts disease might take longer and so here in this case it took about 24 months to correct this deformity which otherwise in an uh, idiopathic case will take probably not more than nine to ten months. Tension band plating in adolescent blouse have contradicting literature uh, uh, but the current algorithm seems to be trying to use it with uh, caution like avoiding the cannulated screws trying to use more than one screws if possible such as double plates or quad plates. Uh, is tension band plating effective in sagittal plane deformities? The answer is yes, especially in the fixed flexion deformities in neuromuscular conditions, including CP or arthrogryposis. The downside is that you have to make arthrotomies on both sides of patella with anterolateral and intramedial, inserting in plates. And the gradual correction of this flexion deformity is possible, but it takes longer time, uh, usually, Patients have to have at least two years of residual growth. With, you, you wouldn't want to do this uh, technique in uh, greater than 15 degrees of deformities or 20 degrees of deformities. It has just slow correction rate compared to the coronal plane deformities and takes longer time. This is a glimpse of a surgical technique that's placing wires and then rows is similar to the coronal plane. Uh, the deformities around the ankle, uh, if you look at the ankle valves, uh, tension band plating is an 
valid option uh, create, uh, advocating that the, there are lesser device-related complications, but skin irritation and superficial infection are risks. Uh, if you if you use a smaller profile implants, you can avoid them, but single medial malleolar screws still seems to be better tolerated. This was argued with the uh, inventor's original article, uh, indicating that the screw itself has also its own problems, like uh, difficulty in removing the screw or the head of the screw impinging on the tails, etc. So what can we do with the deformities around the hip? And, and Cox of Air attention band plating might have a role. Uh, and here you see in the fluoroscopy shot, the screw seems to be in the apophysis, which is not ossified yet. But in chondrodysplasia or skeletal dysplasias of certain types, uh, there are some valid applications. Uh, here you see an example of this patient with chin, pan, chinu, uh, genuverum and pangenu application in the hip, in the distal femur, proximal tibia, etc. And here you see in uh, the full correction in two years of age of follow. So tension band plating around hip for coxavera can be offered in selected cases. How about the epiphyseal disease or growth modulation of limb length discrepancies? The indications well, the predicted, if the predicted limb length discrepancy maturity is unclear, if you have a goal to mitigate the LLD at a younger age, you can choose this technique. It shouldn't be preferred within the last two years of skeletal maturity with the risk of undercorrection. Uh, and it's recommended to be applied earlier than other methods uh, with the reasons that I have explained before. For LLD, using dual place, one on each side of the physis are preferred. And uh, well, Again, if you want to buy some time, you can use this technique, but it is probably creating less uh, improvement within the same time period compared to percutaneous epiphyseal disease with more need for surgical procedures, more complication rates, such as creation of additional deformity while trying to uh, correct the uh, limb length discrepancy. If the screws are placed parallel, uh, they tend to diverge over the first few months indicating a lag effect. And that's the case uh, in limb length discrepancy that we might want to insert these screws a little divergent. Uh, on the contrary to the uh, angular deformity corrections, we like to put them in parallel. For, for the angular deformity correction, we, we usually prefer to put them at the best fit or parallel, but in limb length discrepancy correction, we try to put them divergent to avoid the lag effect of this uh, configuration. In addition, the dual plate application for the LLD might also create an unknown problem called volcano effect. It's called the uh, uh, volcano effect because it looks like a volcano. The clinical significance is still not known very much, but it radiographically, if you look at the deformity, the roof angle and the slope angle changes and it looks like a volcano type of deformity in the intra-articular region in the proximal tibia. For treating the idiopathic angular deformities in, uh, in, in, in this population, we have a faster correction rate, fewer complications, with higher success rate than the pathological physis. And they're the excellent candidates for tension band plating. Again, uh, the screws are, need to be parallel. The calculated rate of correction in a mixed etiology group was around 0 0.7 degrees for femur and 0 0.5 to 7 degrees for tibia in a large population of uh, patients. The femoral rate correction rate could be uh, predicted, and it is the femoral rate, uh, I'm sorry, the femoral rate of correction was significantly faster than tibia. And in general, the rate of correction can be predicted uh, with, this, with the help of this recent article. Uh, valgus deformities are corrected faster than various. Here's a table uh, showing the rate of correction and you can choose from which you are dealing with and uh, make an explanation to the patient with these assumptions. Can we estimate the rate of correction from an AP knee x-ray? Yes, probably we can. Using uh, such a correlation between the joint orientation angles and the delta ISA, which is the intersecure angle, 
uh, we know that if the uh, phi is growing, the joint orientation angles change. And there's a correlation using the LDFA and the MPPA versus the, uh, the angle difference between the interscrew angle. And this creates a formula which helps to make some assumptions again in correlation. In pathological physis, uh, this technique still works and might take longer duration. Uh, it is effective with the risk of insufficient correction. It is, is suggested to be performed in deformities less than 20 degrees. And uh, if the deformity is more, osteotomy could be a better option. Here's a patient with hypophosphatemic rickets getting corrected in nine months with the distal femur and proximal tibia application. It's a healed nutritional rickets is an another uh, topic for this type of technique. And there's a recent article in the, uh, there's a recent article showing and giving an algorithm to treat such deformities. And if it's not greater than 30 degrees, usually the physe is selected uh, with the greater deformity amount. In uh, skeletal dysplasia, this technique is proven to be uh, safe and effective. It can be performed as young as four years of age with low risk and osteotomy could be avoided with this technique. MPS, especially type one and type twos are, uh, uh, are okay to use this technique with the, uh, with the idea in mind to be kept is that recurrence is very frequent and rebound phenomena should be also warned. So rotational correction, theoretically, there are experimental studies shedding light in this topic, showing that if you place dual plates in an oblique fashion, you can create a torsional deformity, or theoretically, you can create torsional deformities in the future. Uh, we need uh, some more studies to put uh, this information into clinical practice. Coming to a conclusion, uh, we, what kind of complications do we have in growth modulation, screw migration, infection, overcorrection, permanent physical arrest, uh, implant failures, including broken screws, which are more frequent in blouse and obese, and rebound phenomenon, depending on the literature, change between 20 to 40 percent. The most uh, mechanical failures in eight plate hemiepiphyseal disease uh, are the broken screws in the adolescent plant or in obese patients. In metaphyseal screws breakage are more common than epiphyseal screw breakage. For this, the authors recommended to use uh, double plating to avoid this type of mechanical failure. Rebound is higher in less than 10 years of age and also in femurs, rebound is more possibly just because uh, having greater potential for growth. Uh, the rebound was found to be one millimeter per month, per month MAD difference uh, to be followed. So the rebound is variable uh, uh, depending on uh, the condition, the setting. It occurs usually several weeks after the removal, not right after the surgery. Uh, the rebound phenomenon also comes with an overcorrection. Should we overcorrect these patients? Possibly in younger patients, slight overcorrection should be performed, but clear indications and guidelines do not exist, and there's even contradicting information associated with obesity or low, low, low BMI. So we, don't, uh, we can't come to a conclusion in that aspect. This is a patient who uh, didn't come back to a follow-up ending up with excessive overcorrection yielding uh, osteotomy, which is unnecessary, uh, but reality. So younger age is probably the most important parameter in expecting a rebound and a overcorrect need for overcorrection. So one theory behind rebound is that the pent up energy of growth beneath the tension band plating is unleashed at the time of tension band plating removal, leading to these rapid relapses. So take on message, we don't know the rate of overcorrection amount, and this has to be uh, thought carefully. So if, you, uh, if you're talking about rebound and overcorrection, one will bring up this idea of removal of metaphysical screw. This has been advised uh, in Stevens article and many other surgeons and literature have been included this technique, but 
removing just metaphysics crew and waiting, is it safe? Well, Edelman and his crew uh, investigated this. They have developed, they have found that recurrence was only in 20% of the cases. And for those uh, recurrent uh, relapse patients, uh, only 12 of them had metaphysics screw reinserted. So in nine of these either had played or its location had to be changed. In two cases, they saw radiographic bony bar with undesired carotid rest, coming to a conclusion that removing only a metaphysis screw was found to be a, not was not found to be an advisable strategy. For the different material properties, uh, intuitively stainless steel is stronger than titanium and solid screws are stronger than cannulated screw, but the inventors of this technique disputed these uh, results of this uh, article in his uh, in his letter, and articulating plates possibly uh, offer better anatomical fit, and they might also be advantages in avoiding some implant failures. But again, uh, studies, further studies need to be uh, made in order to come to a solid conclusion in these in these group of informations. Uh, for those who find uh, cost is an issue, can mimic the same effect by applying 3.5 millimeter recon plate with two screws, uh, keeping in mind that these have higher profile bulk and are bulkier compared to eight plate, might causing uh, irritation and superficial infection. So tension bent plating is effective. It requires meticulous surgical technique and causes minimal complications. In patients, uh, greater than uh, BMI 35 and older age with an, with an underlying etiology such as pseudoachondroplasia, uh, uh, correction might not be achieved. In adolescent blouse, they have both high BMI and the physis is thought to be sick, so then a real question mark is over there and surgeon needs to be very careful, cognizant about these possible problems. Aside from blunt obesity or advanced skeletal age, pseudoechondroplasia, severe deformities might also be a risk for tension band plating purposes, and might sometimes osteotomies might be a better uh, resort for those problems. And if the patient is unwilling to attend regular follow-up visits, if you don't think you can follow up the patient, you shouldn't be using tension band plating. I'd like to remind the virtual edition of EPOS 39 annual meeting and thank you very much for your attention.